Okay, so here we are in the beautifully laid out Black Magic camera app. We're going to start from the top left and work our way across and go through what each and everything does. Starting with lenses. So simply by pressing on lenses brings up this menu to the right hand side and you can select whichever lens you want. And obviously based on what iPhone you're using, your selection might be slightly different. But yeah, you've got your telephoto, your wide angle, your main, your front lens. And just by pressing on whichever one you want will activate that. Next along, you've got your frame rate. Currently, I'm shooting in 4K, and in 4K, you can shoot up to 60 frames per second. Just use the slider to change the frame rate there. Um, and in 1080p, you can shoot up to 120 frames per second. Uh, next along is your shutter speed. Again, use the slider to select your desired shutter speed, and but bearing in mind, if you're gonna use the 180 degree rule and you're shooting in daylight or bright light, you will probably most likely need an ND filter because it will just look way too overexposed. At the top, you can see there's a, a padlock um, wherever you see a padlock, always lock it in place so when you're shooting, things don't start to look mad and start changing throughout the shot. Um, next song, you've got your f-stop, um, which is slightly grayed out because you can't change that on an iPhone. Uh, in the center, you've got your time code display, uh, which is currently displaying it in the kind of record run, like hours, seconds, minutes. Um, but you can change that in the settings to record it in the time of day if you want, which I'll show you later when we get into the back settings. Then you've got your ISO, so you can just use the slider to select your desired ISO, Oops, uh, but obviously keep it as low as possible where you can to avoid any noise or grain coming into the shot. Then you've got your white balance, um, and if you don't know what to set your white balance at, then just select auto, hold your phone up at the area you're planning to shoot, let it set itself, and then press the padlock, which will lock it in place. If you know what you wanna set it at, then obviously unlock it and use the slider, or you can select one of the presets along the side. But once you've selected whatever it is you select on the slider or the presets, then just lock it in place so it doesn't change throughout the shot, like I said, with the shutter speed. Next up, you've got tint, which works in exactly the same way. You can use the slider, um, but make sure it's unlocked or you won't be able to adjust anything there. Um, and then you've got your resolution, uh, which like I said, currently we're in 4K. Uh, now weirdly, you can't press on this to change it. You have to go into the back settings, um, but yeah. Next along, you've got your battery indicator, uh, which you can turn on or off to have it there or not, which again, I'll show you later. There's a lot of things I'm gonna show you later, but they're all in the back settings and I didn't wanna keep going back and forward to complicate things. So I thought let's just do everything in front of us first. Then we're gonna go down to the bottom left of the preview window. You've got your histogram to help with your exposure. In the center, you've got your storage. And then in the bottom right, you've got your audio meter. Um, and if you've got an external mic plugged in, then you can press on the uh, audio meter box and you can adjust the audio gain. Um, at the moment, it's grayed out because I don't have one plugged in. But yeah, if you did, this is where you can mess around with that. And then to get rid of that box, just press the audio meter box again. If there's too many icons on the preview window and you want to get rid of it all, just swipe up or down on the preview screen and all of them will disappear and then swipe up or down again and they will come back. If you want to get rid of all of or one or two of the boxes at the bottom, then you can do that in the back settings, which I will show you in a minute. Um, and then on the preview window, if you hold and press down, you can lock the exposure and the focus, and you can then just press anywhere to do the autofocus as well. Now moving over to the right side, this bluish box where the record button is, we'll start from the top and work our way down. Um, so first option is overlays and you've got your zebras or zebras. I don't know, I've heard a lot of people say zebras, I call it zebra, but it's essentially the same thing. This is to help with your exposure and you can use the slider to set where it kicks in. Um, and at the top, you can see it says on now, which is highlighted blue uh, to turn it off, just press on and then it will go to off. Uh, under that, you've got your focus peaking. Um, again, you can use the slider to uh, set the intensity. So everything that is obviously got the red around it at the moment is what's in focus. Um, and to turn that off, obviously press on again at the top and the blue will go and it will turn off. Then you've got your um, grids and your uh, center cross and your center dots. So this is your rule of thirds. This is to help with your framing um, and you can get rid of 
one of them, all of them, and just have the grid, or if you just wanted the cross or the dot or whatever, you can just select it along uh, this um, sub menu here. Um, next song, you've got your aspect ratio. So yeah, if you were shooting for things like social media or whatever, you can adjust things accordingly here. Um, next down, you've got your um, safe margin guide. So let's say you wanted to make sure certain things were not cut off in the shot that were too close to the edge or whatever. You could kind of have this on to make sure what you want in the shot is essentially in the shot. Uh, then you've got your false color, uh, which will help again with exposure and stuff like that. So you can use the chart along the left. Uh, obviously, red is like way too overexposed. And then you've got your uh, purples and blues, which is kind of underexposed. But yeah, you can turn that off and on uh, with the on and off button at the top. And then you've got your LUT, um, your LUT upload option, which we're going to come on to a little bit more later uh, when we get into the back settings. So I will yeah i'll pause that a bit there and we'll uh, talk about that a bit more detail in a minute so that's your kind of overlays uh, if we go now to the next one down which is your focus so at the moment it's in auto focus uh, if i turn auto off i can use the slider to manually focus uh, the slider isn't the best uh, it's a very big slider meaning you can't do any focus pulling if you wanted to um yeah i mean you could kind of like let's say i was here, I could kind of get my finger and just swipe up on the screen and hope that it stops where, and I kind of didn't. Yeah, we need to be about there. I, I, like one of those games where you get your, like, I don't know what they're called, but where you just kind of hope that it stops where it stops, like those spinning games. I don't know, but yeah, it's not really ideal anyway. Yeah, you're not gonna do that. Just, yeah, you're gonna have to do your manual stuff like this or just keep it on auto, um, yeah. Next down, you've got your exposure. Um, so again, you can use the slider accordingly. And then you've got your uh, record button to start or stop recording. Then you've got your stabilization. Now, if I turn the stabilization off, you can see that uh, it kind of pops it out a bit. So there is a slight crop when you have stabilization on. So if I put it back to standard, you can see that's cropped in a little bit, but it doesn't crop in any further than this. So if I go to cinematic, it doesn't crop it in even more. Or if I go to extreme, it doesn't crop it in even more than that. It is just one crop, but yeah, it's a slight crop. So you can see there, you can see that my blue kind of handle thing there is uh, showing. And now if I go to standard, it's not showing. Uh, also, if you use extreme, then there's a slight delay on the preview window, um, but it's very, very, very slight. I've seen worse delays. It's not that noticeable, but it kind of is if you notice it's there, if you get what I mean. But yeah, uh, standard does a pretty good job. Um, but yeah, if you were running or biking or whatever, maybe extreme might be for you. Then you've got your zoom, which I don't recommend using because the more you use this, the, the, the more quality is being lost. It's a digital zoom. So yeah, it's not really the best thing to use, but um, if you want to use it, there it is. Uh, and then you've got your slate metadata information input options. So you can yeah input anything you want here to your heart's content. Um, and then we're going to move over to the right side where you've got these four buttons, camera, media, chat and settings. So camera, uh, any anytime you're in any menu uh, like screen that you want to get back to this screen, which is the camera screen, just press camera and it will take you back here. Uh, next along you've got media. So this is showing you everything uh, you've obviously recorded. So simply by pressing on whichever video you want, we'll bring it up and you can play it or whatever. And then you can also upload it to the uh, Blackmagic Cloud, which I'm gonna talk about in more detail in a minute, but that's that button there. Uh, you, or the next button along is to upload it or save it to your phone or send it to someone. Uh, then you've got your information, which I think is pretty cool. So if you shot a shot and you, use certain settings but you can't remember what what whatever was you can view it in here and yeah that's pretty cool you could favorite it or delete it uh then you can select all clips uh or some clips and either upload them to the cloud in one uh save them to your phone in one say send them to someone else in one or obviously delete them next along you've got the option to sort your clips out by date time location scene shot um, etc. Um, and yeah, next down, you've then got your chat. 
so yeah if you were uploading to uh, the cloud to a project that you had other people working on somewhere else you can chat about a clip i guess here as you can see i've got no one in the chat because no one's replied to me this morning but yeah uh let's yeah just chatting to myself here but uh yeah i don't know i personally probably would never use this it's, i guess it's a cool feature to have if i wanted to talk to someone about a clip I probably would ring them or WhatsApp them, but yeah, that option is there if you want. And now we go down to the juicy bits, which is the back settings. So, um, record. So here's where you can change your codec. So you have the option to shoot in ProRes 422, um, H.265, H.264. So with ProRes, uh, the good thing about ProRes here is in the normal iPhone native camera app, you can only shoot 4K60 ProRes with an external hard drive connected. Uh, whereas in the Blackmagic app, you can shoot 4K60 ProRes without an external hard drive connected. But I mean, you are gonna need to make sure you have uh, uh, like a lot of space in your phone. So if we go, if we select ProRes and go back, you can see now, remember we had like 37 hours of storage. We've now only got like two hours, 46 minutes. It's madness how much space this ProRes takes up. But yeah, you gotta make sure you have a lot of memory for that. But yeah, it's, it's, I guess it's handy to know that you don't have to have an external hard drive plugged into it to shoot 4K60 ProRes versus in the native camera app, you do have to have something plugged in. Uh, if you want to shoot in H.264 uh, in 4K, you can only shoot up to 30 frames per second, so you can't shoot up to 60. Um, but if you change it to 1080p in H.264, you can shoot up to 60. So that's uh, another thing to note there. But yeah, here's where you can choose your desired codec. Uh, next along is your resolution, like I was saying earlier, um, switching between 4K, 1080p, 720, um, where I said you can't select that at the top right there. This is where you would do it in the back settings. Then you've got your color space. So here you've got your Rec 709, Rec 2020, and you've got Apple Log as well. Um, so next along, you've got your time code display, which like I said, at the moment is in record run, uh, hours, minutes, seconds. Uh, you can change it to time of day. So if we press that and go back, you can see now it shows the time of day rather than it in hours, minutes, seconds, etc. But I prefer it on record run. Um, and then you've got the option to turn on time-lapse recording. Uh, and then if media drops a frame, it can alert you or stop recording. And then next along, you've got camera. So if you're using anamorphic lens, I love the word anamorphic, anamorphic, anamorphic. Yeah, if you're using an anamorphic lens, you can mess around with these settings here. I haven't got one on at the moment, so I can't really give you an example. Um, and then we've got enable vertical video. So this is very interesting. Uh, so enable vertical video. If you have enable vertical video turned off, okay, and we go back to camera and we switch. So at the moment, obviously it's horizontal. Well, this is a bit mad, I've got it stuck to this, right? So at the moment it's in horizontal, right? If I switch it now to um, vertical, you can see that it's still displaying it horizontally, which is pretty cool. So basically, in short, you can record things horizontally whilst the phone is vertically. So at the moment, the phone I'm holding up literally as if I was like texting, blah, blah, blah. So if I press record on this shot here uh, on the camera and then I stop, right? If I move the phone back to its horizontal, uh, horizontal space, and then I press record, right? The key thing to note with this is there's a, there's a crop. And I was gonna say a slight crop, it's not a slight crop, it is a quite a big crop. If I now go to media and I press on the first clip, which is when the phone, look, this was when the phone was, ver we was holding it vertically, right? And now this was when we was holding it horizontally. You can see the difference. That's mad, that is mad. It's a very, very big crop. It's not a slight crop, it's a very, very big crop. Yeah, so just keep that in mind. But if you turn enable vertical video on and you go back and you turn it around, obviously now it's shooting exactly how it would with the phone being vertical. Yeah, so it's, re it's a really cool feature, but it does crop it in, it does crop it in. Now this is where it messed 
me up a little bit and you might think that I'm stupid for this because now it sounds stupid, but I had lock orientate, current orientation on at the start. And what happened was I was going and switching the phone around like this and the icons weren't moving and I didn't know why. Um, but that's the reason why it's because I had lock current orientation on. So in short, if you are wondering why when you're moving the phone around, it's not moving the icons, then it's because you've got lock current orientation on. But but what if you are if you have that on and you are and I shoot like this in vertical, it still shoots it in vertical, even with lock current orientation on. And if I go like this horizontal, it still shoots horizontal, even with that on as well. So, yeah, it's um. It's quite a silly mistake, I think. Hold on, let me just put this back on there. There we go. It's quite a silly mistake uh, that I made, but yeah, one one that if you are wondering what the hell's going on, that maybe that is an option you need to turn off. So lock current orientation, I would keep that off so everything kind of moves around with it. Next down, you've got lens correction. Uh, so to help with any distortion that you might have in your shot. Uh, then you've got use volume button to trigger record. So instead of just pressing the record button, you can press the volume button to start or stop recording. And then this is what I was telling you about earlier, lock white balance on record. So if you, let's say, had it on auto and then you pressed record and you moved the phone around, usually it would change the white balance based on the change of shot. But you can see the numbers not changing at the top because we have that setting on the lock white balance on record is on. Uh, so yeah, keep that on as a safety net, uh, just in case you forget to lock it uh, on the actual white balance there with the padlock. And then mirror front facing camera. So usually the camera flips the image when using the front facing camera. So to stop this happening and have it look like it does, essentially when you look in the mirror, you can turn this on. Shutter measurement. Um, currently it's on speed. You can change it to angle if you want. So you can see now at the top, it, you can switch between angles rather than it being in speed, but I prefer it on speed. Um, and then trigger record indicator. You can have it beep or beep and flash when you press record. It doesn't beep actually. It does the same noise that it does when you take a photo. I'll show you. Let me turn beep and flash on and then we press record. Let listen. See, it's like the duh -duh. No, it's not. Sorry, not duh -duh. like <laughs> I can't do it. But anyway, did you hear it? Yeah. So if you want that on, then put that on there. Cool, that's that. Now we're going down to audio. Uh, you don't really need to make any adjustments in audio. Uh, if you've got external mic plugged in, then yes, you mess around with all that here, but I don't. Uh, AAC stereo, the sample rate on auto, it's all default and it's all pretty fine to keep as it is. So I wouldn't really mess around with any of this. Next along you've got um your monitor settings so focus assist is currently set to colored lines as you saw earlier so if we go back to focus assist and turn it on uh so look everything is red there if i change it to peaking you can see it it changes it essentially to peaking i don't like it like this but if you did then you can change it like this i prefer it with the red lines but yeah that's what that means so if you keep it on colored lines then there you go there um, if you don't want red, you can change it underneath to green. Let's see. There you go. Or blue. Or black. Although you probably won't see too much of the black there yet. I would personally keep it on red. Um, you can see it pretty clearly against most things. Um, yeah. Uh, guides opacity. So the guides that we brought up earlier, if I turn that off and go back to the guides. So these guides here. Uh, you know what? I haven't personally seen any difference of changing the opacity to 12 from 25 percent to 100 so i'm going to put it to 100 can you see any difference i don't know i can't uh let me put it back to 25 there's no difference there literally is no difference am i being stupid i don't know let me know is am i missing something yeah but i can't see any difference but yeah it's on 25 as default so i just kept it on that you can change the color of the lines if you want uh, uh obviously by default they're on white but if you want red put them on red um on green put them on green but yeah i like to keep it on white uh hdmi settings are here um and then here's what i was talking about earlier if you want to get rid of some of those boxes at the bottom of the screen so the audio meter the histogram the storage 
although that's not on there at the moment, I'll show you in a minute. The upload status, sorry, storage is on there, upload status isn't on there, uh, and then the battery indicator. So, um, audio meter, if we turn that off and histogram and we go back, you can see now, look, you've only got storage in the middle. So, you, you know, you can mess around with those three boxes based on what you want to be displayed. Or if you don't want any of them to be displayed, obviously just turn all of them off and look, they've all three disappeared. Um, so upload status is upload to the cloud, which obviously I'm going to talk about the cloud in a minute, but upload to the cloud. So if I go to media and let's say I press upload and I go back to the main screen, you can see, oh, I need to turn this setting off. Right, so you can see it if I go now to here and I go back to, no, you can't see it. What's going on? Uh, have I turned it off? No, it's on. Uh, let's go back. Oh, upload pause. Oh, no internet connection. Yeah, it's because I've got it. Oh, that's okay. That's why. Okay, silly me. Right, it's because I've got it on airplane mode, so my notifications didn't come through. <laughs> okay, right. Let's go back. So basically, all that happens is a box appears here uh, next to the storage to show your upload status to the cloud. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. I've literally turned it on airplane mode, so I didn't get notifications come through whilst I was screen recording. Cool. Okay. Anyway, yeah. Let's go back. So that's what that is. It just displays the status of the upload, uh, and then the top right battery indicator. Like I said, if you don't want that on, you can turn it off, and it's disappeared uh, from there as well. But I think it's handy to have that on, so I keep it on. Then you've got media uh, upload clips, proxies only. This is to the cloud to, to save space. Uh, just keep it on proxies only. If you want the originals, then you can obviously choose that there. Or to upload to a selected project. Uh, again, to the cloud, enable upload only over Wi-Fi and obviously without uh, airplane mode on if you're using data uh, like I was trying to do just then uh, and save clips to in-app only or in-app and photo libraries. So obviously choosing the second option is going to uh, use more storage on your phone. So I would just do it manually and keep it on in-app only. Save location data to clip. That's always handy to have on and then file name convention. So at the moment it's on black magic camera so what essentially this is like the file name extension so if i go to media you can see this is currently displayed as like a0011 da, 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 these all these numbers if i change it to ios go back to camera press record go back to media you can see now the top one img0023 so it just changes the file extension name of it so it's just really what you prefer to have it actually i think i'm going to keep it on ios it just depends on how you like to view the file extension names. Right, then we've got LUTs. So uh, when you're shooting in log, um, obviously the preview window displays it as a washed out look. So if I change um, it to log and we go to the preview window. So now you can see on the preview window, everything is washed out because obviously, you know, the idea of log is gonna do the color grading layer. But um, what you can do is you can upload a LUT um, and you can have that overlay on the preview window so you can see essentially what things are going to look like when you do your color grading in post later. So I've uploaded a lot and to do that, let's say you've got it on your Mac, just airdrop it from your Mac to your iPhone, save it in your files and then you can go into load LUT and select it wherever you've saved it and then it will load it here. Um, and then if you go onto your camera and then remember when we went to overlays earlier at the top and at the bottom there was LUT. If you press LUT now and press it on, you can see now the LUT that I've got selected is now uh, overlaying on the preview uh, screen, which is pretty cool. So instead of it being washed out, it's obviously somewhat, yeah, good for you to preview in color. So yeah, and then Oops, and then to turn it off, obviously just go to LUT and then press on to turn it off again like you would do with anything else. But yeah, here is where you would upload the LUTs to. Just save it to your files from your Mac from AirDrop. Next down, you've got accessories. If you've got any accessories connected, then obviously mess around with them here. And then the Black Magic Cloud. So with the Black Magic Cloud, uh, you get two gigabytes free storage when you open an account. And you essentially, yeah, you can just upload stuff to the cloud like any cloud works and then it can be accessed from wherever just by logging on. Um, so like I said, two gigabytes of free storage and you can upgrade. So the next level up is 500 gigabytes, which is 18 pound a month. And then it goes to two terabytes, which is 72 pound a month. Yes, you heard. Um, it goes all the way up to one PB. Now, I have never heard of PB, so I learned something new today. PB, PETA petabyte am i pronouncing it right i don't know you maybe have heard of it i never have heard of it i didn't know that was a thing but petabyte 
it sounds even weird saying it one pb yeah it goes up to it goes up to one pb if you're interested in one pb but it's going to cost you thirty six thousand pound a month to have one pb storage um yeah quite quite something but anyway that's the way the cloud works and like i was showing you in media you can simply just select a clip or various clips and this button up the top is just uploading it to the cloud so once i press upload if i obviously was connected to internet it would upload it to the cloud i could then go on my mac log into the cloud and then that file would appear there and yeah i could do what i want with it there or if someone was you know elsewhere and you was wanting them to edit things throughout the day you could upload it to the cloud or they would receive it and yeah it kind of works seamlessly with davinci resolve and all of that so yeah it's a really cool idea but you only get two gigabytes uh and the next level like i said is 500 which is 18 pound a month which is quite pricey but yeah have a mess around with that if you wish then you've got reset so if you wanted to reset all the settings uh because you mess around with them too much and yeah just want to go back to the default then you can do that there uh then you've got your version blah 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 and if you needed to turn on any permissions for the app like microphones or whatever because certain things weren't working then you can press open black magic camera settings it would take you to here and yeah you can then enable whatever it is you need to enable for permissions there and that is pretty much that uh yeah you know what it is a really cool app it is still obviously only like version one so there is a few glitches here and there that aren't a hundred percent but yeah you're never going to get an app that's like version one that's a hundred percent so i think over time it's just going to get better and better but yeah i hope that's helped um and yeah magic black magic camera app in your pocket <laughs>